Uh, welcome everyone to this next lecture on tangent spaces and manifolds. Uh, so, we had just begun with the definition of tangent space and a manifold. Uh, we also said what is a tangent bundle and uh, it helps to know uh, a little about some more examples of manifolds. So, we saw some standard terms S 1 we said is a circle, circle meaning we just mean x square plus y square minus 1 equal to 0. The, uh, what is defined defined by this equation S 2 was our standard 2 sphere which we prefer calling x square x 1 square plus x 2 square plus x 3 square minus 1 equal to 0. Similarly, we can have S n yeah the sphere n dimensional m n dimensional sphere embedded in R n plus 1. Yeah? So, R stands for the set of real numbers superscript n plus 1 means n plus 1 components which we will say x 1 up to x n plus 1. So, this we will say is S n. Another important uh, object is so called torus yeah, T 1, T 2 etcetera. So, these are called torus. So, what is a torus? This torus is also what can be thought of as donut. Yeah, T 1, T 2, T n are more uh, generalizations, but this turns out here in this case this turns out to be S 1 cross S 1. Yeah, any point is denoted as what angle along this torus and then if you cut the torus at any particular uh, angle, then we get another circle. In that sense, the torus with one hole is uh, embeddable in R 3. Yeah, so, this is subset of R 3. So, let me write this in little more detail. So, torus with one hole which we should think of as like our donut yeah donut embeddable in r3 and this turns out to be s1 cross s1 and why is that look at it like this Yeah, there is this this is like a ring which we can hold with by putting our hand inside this yeah so this can also be thought of like a ring a ring whose cross section itself is a circle so one can uh, uh, tell at any point any point on this ring can be told at what is the angle with respect to such a uh, frame let's say and once it is in the cross section once we have identified the cross section using this angle one can say which point on this cross section by another angle yeah uh, that cross section suppose is like this then with respect to radially outward of the outer one of the bigger uh, of this frame one can say what is the angle with respect to this circle in that sense one can see that it is indeed s1 cross s1 yeah so there are different ways this uh, this particular topic requires a good amount of imagination and also a good amount of rigor to uh, be able to do this systematically and not just keep imagining various objects. So, uh, it is easy to see for this example that this is indeed uh, one to one correspondence with the set S 1 cross S 1. In other words, one angle theta 1, another angle theta 2, these two together describe the precise point on the torus. We are not including the interior of this particular donut, we are just speaking of the torus. This is a torus with one hole. There is also some standard uh, manifolds that people deal with. Uh, this particular uh, uh, thing is very relevant for example, in robotics where we have two angles, two angles one uh, at one joint another angle at another joint and one can ask that we are speaking of the evolution on a uh, torus and uh, what kind of uh, uh, dynamical system, what kind of equilibria do we have. This brings us to the next topic that once we are given with a manifold, one can ask what can we say about the equilibria? What can we say about the singular points? 
So, given a dynamical system f of x dot is equal to f of x in which x of t evolves on a manifold manifold. So, unless we specify otherwise in this course we are going to be dealing with only smooth manifolds what we define as regular manifolds. So, on this manifold we have this dynamics and if it turns out that at point A yeah, at point A on the manifold M if f of A equal to 0 then we will say this A is an equilibrium point. equilibrium point. It is an equilibrium point why because if f of a is equal to 0 rate of change of x with respect to time is 0. So, x dot is 0 hence x remains at that point in that sense it is equilibrium, but it being on it being in equilibrium means so that particular point a is also called a singularity. It is singular, some there is some singular. The, it does not mean that some particular matrix is singular. Yeah, singularity just means that something is different here, and in this particular case, all the components of this function f are all 0, it is equal to 0 vector. Hence, the rate of change of x at that particular point is 0, and in that sense, it is an equilibrium point. One can ask what happens about a neighborhood. So, this is something that we have seen in detail. So, one would have to linearize at that particular point. So, at an equilibrium point at an equilibrium point do do nearby trajectories trajectories approach approach which point suppose that equilibrium point was called x naught do nearby trajectories approach x naught yeah if all nearby trajectories approach x naught, then we, we have decided to use the word stable. Yeah? Or if all nearby trajectories approach x naught asymptotically, if they uh, converge to x naught, we will call it asymptotically stable. If they do not blow up, if they remain in that small neighborhood, then we will call it just stable. On the other hand, even if some, if some nearby trajectories go far, if some nearby initial conditions these are things that we already saw in more detail when we were studying Lyapunov stability, but if some nearby initial conditions uh, go away, yeah, then we already call it unstable. So, these all studies are relevant only at an equilibrium point. Why is it relevant only at an equilibrium point? Because let us consider R 2. So, if this is a point which is not a singularity, then that point itself is not going to remain there as a function of time it is going to evolve go further because the vector field at that point is not 0 it is non zero hence it will move in that direction. So, uh, nearby points also is likely to be non zero if this function f is continuous and if it is non zero at a particular point nearby it cannot suddenly become 0. So, nearby also it will be non zero. So, all those points are going to also anyway move. So, it does not ask do nearby trajectories approach this point this point itself is not even an equilibrium point. So, the question about stability or instability automatically applies to only equilibrium points. So, but consider this particular point where the trajectories are let us say changing in a way uh, because uh, so the neighborhood is indeed worth consider worth studying in detail because that point happens to be an equilibrium point and one can ask that can we stabilize this if there were an input one can say that. Um, we will like to stabilize this. So, uh, stability is a question that we also apply only to equilibrium points and it depends on the manifold. Yeah, it, it is possible that certain manifolds, certain manifolds allow, allow uh, uh, certain al manifolds uh, allow no, no equilibrium points. Yeah, certain others certain others require at least one. I am now speaking about a global property of this manifold. What is global about it? Not just locally, it is it turns out that certain manifolds force you to have some equilibrium point at least. If you want the if you want the uh, dynamical system f x dot is equal to f of x, if the function f should be continuous, then certain others require at least one. Yeah. So, this is what we will see in little more detail in this lecture. 
So let us take an example. Yeah. So suppose we speak about R2. The question is if somebody tells us can you draw a vector field on R2 in which there is no equilibrium point. Hmm? Does there exist F such that x dot is equal to f of x, f is smooth, smooth meaning in, in this case it is just continuous and differentiable. Yeah? So, more generally smooth word uh, could also mean infinitely often differential, any number of times the derivative exists, uh, f is smooth and no equilibrium points at all. So, answer is yes, one can just make all, yeah, one can say x dot is equal to 1. That, so, that no point is an equilibrium point. On the other hand, the same question, the answer is no, if you want this f to be smooth and x evolves on a sphere, yeah. So, on a sphere, it turns out on S2, on S2 it turns out, the answer does not exist. So, we cannot have a vector field that is uh, continuous and uh, there is no point where the vector field is uh, 0. In other words, there is no there is no equilibrium point at all. Such a situation cannot happen as far as the sphere S2 is concerned unless you let this f to be discontinuous. So, this turns out to be a very important result which we will see in more detail today. That result is called Harry Ball theorem. So, this uh, requires us to develop a little more concept, but uh, why I am trying to draw your attention to this is that it is a property of the manifold even though stability of the equilibrium point, the equilibrium point itself appears to be of a very local nature. The fact that f has to be continuous and it has to eventually cover the entire manifold forces some properties on the manifold itself. Yeah, it requires something on the manifold for existence of an f whether or not equilibrium points should exist for that f. Let us ask about a circle. Yeah, on the other hand S1 circle is it possible to think of a equilibrium point? Is it possible to think of a dynamical system in which there is no equilibrium point? Yes, we can just have theta dot equal to 1. So, that continuously it is rotating like this and it is going on rotating. So, at no point there is an equilibrium point. Yeah. So, Harry Ball theorem uh, speaks about S2 and it says that one is forced to have an equilibrium point. In fact, if one requires only simple singularities, then one will in fact have at least two singular points. And this turns out to be related to a very celebrated and familiar result to all of you, um, which is uh, that the number of faces, edges, and vertices of any polyhedra satisfy a relation. So, let us come back to uh, classification of, uh, of equilibrium points on a plane. On a plane, we already saw some examples, stable, unstable, node, we saw a node, yeah. we saw a saddle point, we also saw center, what were these? If all trajectories were coming inwards, which turned out to be the case, which turned out to be the case if the matrix A had eigenvalues. Uh, which were uh, both real and negative. This was what we called a stable node. We uh, saw another case where when both eigenvalues were real and positive, that time they uh, this one was an unstable node. On the other hand, a saddle point was, was where eigenvalues are real, but one is positive, one is negative. For example, this is an eigenvector corresponding to positive eigenvalue, let us say. So, everything goes away and if this is an eigenvalue correspond to negative eigenvalue, we are speaking of a plane and we have linearized about the equilibrium point and we are considering the eigenvalues of the matrix, the linearization at that point and at all other points, it is like this. So, we also saw center. We saw uh, the situation where the eigenvalues of A are complex, but depending on uh, whether the real part is positive or negative, we can have oscillations that are coming inwards or going out. This was a situation where the eigenvalues are complex, but on the imaginary axis, so the oscillations are neither coming in nor going out. That is as far as the linear system is concerned and in this case, it turned out that the 
linear linearized system real part is zero but uh, the the second order nonlinearity might uh, cause that the oscillations come inward or go outward uh, and that is why uh, one cannot use a linearized systems conclusion about the, it being a center for the origin nonlinear uh, system also uh, for the equilibrium point of the nonlinear system so as i said for the case that eigenvalues of a are uh, complex if the real part is non zero if the real part is positive then these oscillations are going out on the other hand if the real part is negative it comes inwards so these all we will like to classify as something called the index of that vector field so it will turn out that the stable and unstable node the index is one yeah so we are going to very soon define the notion of index of an equilibrium point which will turn out to be plus 1 plus 1 for stable node unstable node for the saddle point it will turn out to be minus 1 we will verify it for a few examples for center also it will be plus 1 and for uh, for the uh, focus stable and unstable focus also it will turn out to be plus 1 yeah so only the saddle turns out to be little special for which it will be minus 1 so we are going to see um, in more detail what is the meaning of the index of a vector field so let us take a uh, uh, equilibrium point Suppose this is an equilibrium point and we have vectors all around the vectors themselves uh, yeah so first we will consider an isolated equilibrium point what is isolated about it there is some neighborhood within which this is the only equilibrium point yeah we are able to find some circle some curve such that that curve contains this equilibrium point and that curve contains this equilibrium point in the interior and this is the only equilibrium point inside it. If such a curve can be found small enough, then we will call that that equilibrium point is isolated in the sense that it is not sticking to any other equilibrium points. In that sense, it is isolated at least some sufficiently small neighborhood contains only this one. Now, we will like that there is such a curve which does not contain any equilibrium points on it. Hmm? So, choose, choose suitable curve, curve with no equilibrium points on curve yeah let's call this curve so this curve is a closed curve it's also a simple curve in the sense that we are not going to allow this curve to have self intersections starting point and end point are the two only points that are common no other intermediate points are repeated yeah so uh, that, that is indeed the case and we can also give it an orientation we can give it either clockwise or anti clockwise that is not the issue so now we'll ask that look as we go along this curve the we can the vector field at every point on this curve has a unique direction because there are no equilibrium points on the curve if there are equilibrium points on the curve then the vector field has length zero and hence it would have no direction and that would cause a problem to us so we chose a suitable curve which has no equilibrium points on the curve and we chose that this curve has this equilibrium point only and that is possible because this equilibrium point is isolated so now this vector go also goes through a rotation yeah notice that this vector is pointed like this yeah it's like this and as we go along that curve this vector is also turning and if this vector if this curve has is traversing clockwise it turns out that this vector also has turned clockwise yeah so vector field vector field on the curve has unique direction has unique direction because the curve has no equilibrium points on it has unique direction as curve traverses one rotation say clockwise yeah as i said the direction uh, clockwise anti clockwise will not matter so let's choose this clockwise then we can ask whether that particular vector also has rotated how many number of times and whether it's a whether the orientation of that vector also has remained the same or not so if you have chosen the curve to be clockwise has the vector rotated clockwise is the first question and has it rotated say how many number of times once or more so index index is defined as plus 1 if rotation once in the same direction yeah plus 2 if it is rotation twice in the same direction minus 1 if it is rotation 1 but in the opposite direction than the curve. Yeah, the fact that it is same or opposite 
is what decides whether sine and the number of rotations of course is decided by how many times it has rotated. It, it, it remains a question do there exist equilibrium points where you have two rotations. It seems unreasonable that the, the vector rotates in opposite direction as you rotate in the, along the curve in a particular direction let us say clockwise. Yeah? So, most easy to think of is plus 1 uh, where the uh, vector field rotates in the same direction as the uh, curve itself. So, uh, notice that uh, if there is no equilibrium point inside, if there is no equilibrium point inside then the uh, vector field does not rotate any net rotation. It might just change signs like this, but it may not complete a rotation. So, 0 is also possible. In fact, if you have multiple equilibrium points isolated equilibrium points inside, then the curve will in add all these indices and it will be an algebraic sum. That turns out to be an extremely neat concept that all these indices of equilibrium isolated equilibrium points add up for a curve that contains all of these. So, if the curve contains none, if it contains no equilibrium point, then the index of uh, that curve will also automatically be 0. That means, the vector field undergoes no net rotation. So, let us see an example now. Let us take uh, uh, for uh, unstable equilibrium point, for unstable node we have already verified. Let us take a center yeah. and let us take that particular periodic orbit itself as a curve C. So, we see that uh, at every point the curve C, the vector field is tangential to the curve itself and hence uh, when the curve undergoes one rotation, the uh, vector also undergoes exactly one rotation in the same direction. So, now notice that even if the, if uh, even if you are considering, sorry uh, this particular arrow should have been like this, uh, even if the curve was chosen anti-clockwise positive, that does not change the directions of the vector field. Yeah, so, vector field decided by f of x dot is equal to f of x is decided only by f. Curve chosen pretty arbitrarily. Only important constraint is that in order to decide the index of an equilibrium point, one should choose a curve that contains only this particular equilibrium point and that curve should not have any equilibrium point on it. This curve should be should contain precisely one equilibrium point inside it, precisely the equilibrium point for which we are trying to find out the index. Moreover, this curve should be a simple and closed curve. Except for these constraints, it is to be chosen arbitrarily. One can ask, it need not be the periodic orbit that is decided by because this being a center could be in fact the periodic orbit, but in the opposite orientation also and still it turns out that the index of that equilibrium point is independent of which curve has been chosen as long as, as it satisfies these conditions. So, center one can verify that it, it is indeed index, index of a center equal to also plus 1. So, now let us verify a saddle point. So, now let us take a curve like this, let us orient it positive. So, this particular point is the equilibrium point. So, we see that when we start at this point on the curve, it is pointing at upwards yeah, as so this is how we should fill. So, now you can check that as you go along this curve, in fact at this point it is tangential and it's opposite to the curve and this point it is inverse like this. So, we see that as we go along that curve, this uh, particular pen that I was showing has rotated by one number, but in the opposite direction. Yeah? So, index of saddle equal to minus 1. Why? Because if you chose a curve clockwise, when you took the vector field along this curve as you are traversing along the curve in the clockwise direction that particular vector turned out to rotate by one number of times, but in the anti clockwise direction. Yeah, that is why the index of the saddle point is equal to minus 1. So, now that brings us to the question that do there exist uh, equivalent points with index 2. Yeah? So, th this particular question sure would have haunted the dynamical system community for many years and indeed there is. 
this was told to me by my teacher. Uh, so, it requires some effort to construct one. So, one can check that this particular equilibrium point of course, trajectories for smooth vector fields unless you have non Lipschitz properties trajectories do not intersect yeah it is just that they are very close by and they eventually separate like this. So, for such a vector field you can draw a curve and check that the vector rotates by 2 times. Uh, when you go around this particular equilibrium point once. Yeah? So, such a vector field uh, has index equal to 2. So, it turns out that this is a little on a special side, this is a special vector field uh, for it to have such an index and uh, we will let us see what is special about it that it is not, not a simple singularity it is not single simple it is a singularity because it is an equilibrium point, but what is not simple about it? that we will see that the linearization if x dot is equal to f of x of this then you take the derivative of f with respect to x then it will be square matrix when you evaluate it at the equilibrium point x equal to this particular equilibrium point and this matrix eigenvalues is what decided everything. So, you look at the determinant suppose you call this matrix square matrix yeah it is a 2 by 2 matrix determinant of a non zero will decide that that equilibrium point is simple yeah what is the meaning that the determinant of a is zero for, for the linearized system if the determinant of a is zero it means that there is a uh, the equilibrium point is not isolated as far as the linear system is concerned the non linear system uh, equilibrium point might be isolated but the linearization is suggesting that there is a continuum of equilibrium points and that is indeed what happens for linear systems if the uh, matrix a is singular so, if the determinant of A is non-zero, then the matrix A is what we will like to say as a non-singular matrix and for such, such a for such a situation that isolated equilibrium point we will say is a simple single simple singularity if the determinant of A is non-zero. If the determinant of A is 0, then that equilibrium point even if it is isolated we will say is not a simple singularity. So, only with non simple singularities one can have index more than 2 more than 1. So, index equal to 2 or more is possible only for non simple singularities. One can check that the saddle point stable and stable focus they all have sim they are they are all simple singularities and hence the indexes are in a plus or minus 1 only. So, this brings us to the uh, one of the last topics of this uh, one of the last uh, sub topic of this topic that is about uh, the hairy ball theorem yeah so one can ask now now suppose we are given with a sphere given a sphere find f to have no singularity or if inevitable yeah only simple singularities so this is a question given a sphere find a function f what is this function f because we are trying to construct dynamics like this so we we'll see if, if there are no singularities it means that you can never stabilize the system at any point yeah there cannot be an equilibrium point itself that is a consequence if there is no singularity. If there are sing singularities then we will like that they are simple singularities because they are um, linearized because we will ideally like linear system linearization and linear control to operate there. So, uh, if it is not a simple singularity then we need more complex systems because uh, the eigen value at the origin suggests that at steady state there is a non zero uh, value it is not converging, but it is staying close by only asymptotic stability requires that all equilibrium points are in the left half linearization at every equilibrium point is in the 
has eigenvalues in left half complex plane. So, simple singularities are good in that sense. So, it turns out that there is this person not uh, there is a uh, hairy ball theorem that tells us no singularity is not possible. Yeah, one requires at least two simple singularities. If you allow the singularities to be non simple, then one would suffice. Hairy ball theorem says that continuous combing of a hairy ball uh, leaves at least one singularity. What is uh, combing of a hairy ball? So, suppose we are given with a ball and suppose we are uh, this ball has a lot of hair along it. This hair each each hair hair is like a regular hair H A I R yeah. If uh, this hair denotes a vector field at that point at each point there is some hair that starts starts at the origin of the of the tangent space at that point and it is it defines a unique direction and we are now asked that we are required to comb it in a continuous way. Yeah, so, this tells that the f has to also be continuous in x. So, uh, what is combing about it because we want that uh, hairs are all uh, in the tangent space in that, in that sense they are tangential to the ball they cannot be standing out the hair cannot be sticking out like this they had better get combed on that ball. So, combing means that that particular vector is in the tangent space continuous the function f is continuous hairy ball meaning the ball has hairs and each of these hairs are nothing but vectors in that tangent space Tan tangent space is one that is getting forced because of this combing process. Now, we will like that there is at every point there is one hair that is non zero length that is the meaning that there is no singularity. So, is it possible that we can continuously comb without a singularity? Yeah, so, it turns out that the answer is no the hairy ball theorem says that there will at least be one singularity this is the meaning that when we comb there is a at least a point on the head where uh, all the hair are going away or going round and round this are uh, what is well known when we comb the hair comb our own uh, heads hair for example. Yeah. So, what is this one singularity this one singularity is inevitable because the sphere the, the fact that we are given with a sphere the sphere as a manifold is forcing that the manifold uh, all the um, isolated singularities when we add the indices we end up getting number 2 yeah that is uh, the uh, sum of all the indices of every uh, equilibrium point isolated equilibrium point and we have defined e index only for isolated equilibrium points. So, let us now uh, say if simple if simple singularities at least two are inevitable at least two required. So, this number two is extremely special what is special about it for example, we can now think of a ball like this let us say we have a north pole and a south pole. So, we can think of vectors leaving from north pole and all converging towards the south pole. Yeah, This is an example of a vector field which is continuous leaves the north pole all comes towards the south pole. So, two simple singularity two singularities only both are simple why because this one the north one is a unstable node while the south one south pole is a stable node. So, they both are simple singularities they both have index 2 index 1 each. So, the total uh, sum of all in indices for all uh, equivalent points is exactly 2. So, um, we can see that we can construct such a case one using that particular uh, uh, non non simple singularity we can also uh, think of this uh, on the sphere and this uh, goes all along like this. So, one can think of uh, a non simple singularity a singularity itself of index 2 uh, defined like this on the sphere. Yeah. So, now what is special about 2? So, that brings me to uh, one of the last uh, uh, very good relation with uh, for a polyhedra. So, for polyhedra 
the Euler's theorem for polyhedra says that the number of faces minus number of edges plus number of vertices is equal to 2 yeah for any uh, closed polyhedra with no holes importantly with no holes so for example for a, a cube so then faces the number of faces is equal to uh, 6 the number of edges is equal to 4 on the top, 4 on the bottom and 4 vertical that is 12 and the number of vertices we uh, have 4 on the top, 4 on the bottom that is 8. So, we get that uh, 6 minus 12 that is minus 4, 6 minus 12 minus 6 plus uh, 8 that is plus 2. So, we get 2. Yeah. So, what is the relation between uh, this and uh, singularities on a sphere? So, one can now uh, think of a sphere and we can uh, try to sort of look at uh, this having a uh, faces, edges in which uh, we uh, put these points all the edges are marked and the faces are like different regions on the sphere. So, a polyhedra we can think of is actually very similar to a sphere in some topological sense it is uh, nothing but a sphere with all these lines marked on the sphere. Yeah. Now, inside each face one can have a let us say for example, a stable node and at, at each node at each vertex we can have an unstable node everything going away and uh, between two uh, vertices it will turn out that there will have to be a saddle point. Yeah, so, let me draw this figure a little larger. So, let us take this cube. So, this is at the center of each face we decided to have a stable node, stable node at each vertex we will have an unstable node at the center of each edge we will have this saddle point. So, that sorry So, we see that at the center of every edge we need to have a saddle point if we have to be able to do this uh, systematically continuously more precisely. Sorry, this, this arrow also should be inverts because all our vertices have been decided as unstable nodes. So, it is all going away from, from vertices. At, uh, if it goes away from every vertex, then between two vertices there is exactly one edge that center of that edge is where both seem to be coming in. So, why do not we make that stable as far as this edge is concerned, but if we have the center of every face to also be a stable node, then it will be going away from this particular point. So, fine that that way let us allow this to be a saddle point. Yeah, so, notice that this is a systematic continuous consistent way of uh, placing the uh, saddle points. How many saddle points would we have placed? E number yeah, the number of edges. How many uh, uh, stable nodes would we have put? F number of stable nodes and how many unstable nodes would we have put? Number of vertices. V number of unstable nodes. So, now we uh, know that this uh, we can add the indices for all of them. So, we know that indices of saddle point is minus 1. So, the sum of over all uh, equilibrium points will in fact give us f minus e plus v because both stable and unstable nodes have plus 1 as their indices. So, f and v both come with plus sign and e on the other hand because it corresponds to a saddle point which has index minus 1 it uh, corresponds to uh, minus sign here. 
So, this one is what we saw for uh, uh, polyhedra is equal to 2 and that is exactly what we also saw for the north pole and south pole there also it turned out to be 2. So, uh, what it says is that the sum being 2 is a property of the sphere it is not a property of whether you take a cube or a pyramid. The fact that every phase you associate a stable uh, node and every vertex you can have an unstable node and then at the edge you are forced to have a saddle point and then sum of all vertices will sum of all the indices of equivalent points will exactly turn out to be 2 by this particular formula and the 2 is like an in invariant of this particular topological object called the sphere and all these polyhedra are in that sense. Hom uh, homotopic to a sphere. So, uh, so this uh, brings us to the end of uh, seeing how the Harry Ball theorem uh, says that it is inevitable that for a sphere we cannot have a situation where for a continuous function f we do not have any equivalent points at all, we do not have any singularity such a situation is not possible. One last question is somebody can ask can you interchange the role of stable node and unstable nodes? In other words, can you have a stable node at every vertex and an unstable node at every face? Yeah, that is still possible. Still at the edge you will require a saddle point, perhaps with just some arrows reversed, but then the formula will still turn out to be 2. That is because uh, some of all the indices of equivalent points will still turn out to be 2, because we know that both stable and unstable nodes both have index plus 1. So, uh, this uh, uh, is one of uh, extremely important, uh, extremely uh, enchanting topic within uh, uh, nonlinear dynamical systems about how it is related to uh, Euler's polyhedra formula and uh, through that to uh, something called algebraic topology. But then I do not work in this nor do I know enough, uh, I want just you to know about this and uh, tangent spaces on the other hand finds, uh, finds wide applications in control when dealing with nonlinear systems especially on manifolds. Uh, with that we will end this lecture on tangent spaces and manifolds. Thank you.